Good afternoon and welcome to Trinity Cathedral in downtown Cleveland, Ohio on this beautiful Wednesday noontime, the day after election day. And uh, in our amazing foresight, we thought that perhaps given the, prayer, the uh, jangled state of degree of um, anticipation going on around the country, some great music might be just what you need to calm those nerves, distract your mind, and uh, engage your spirit in a totally constructive way. So we can provide that music for you right now with this uh, live stream brown bag concert from the organ loft here at Trinity Cathedral. And as you may know, the organ here is built by the Flentrop Company, one of the great uh, Dutch organ building firms. It was built in 1977. You can see the three keyboards and the pedal board here. And I'm really honored to uh, welcome my friend and colleague here at Trinity, Nicole Keller, who will be presiding program called the Arc of the Keyboard, during the course of which she will demonstrate uh, and I think win you over to some of the glories of some of the earlier keyboard music written for any keyboard instrument and some written specifically for the organ. So she'll be telling you a bit more about this, but you'll find that it's really wonderful and engaging stuff. Before we get on to the program, you'll recognize that uh, without a live audience, we are missing our usual basket passing time during the brown bags. And if you can help us to uh, financially support these programs in any way, shape, or form, we would be more than grateful. And you can do that by following the link that you'll find on the screen, or you can simply send a check to Music and Art at Trinity, mail it to uh, 2230 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44115. And in the memo line of your check, just put Brown Bag Concerts. Again, we are, we are very grateful for anything that you could send our way. And in the meanwhile, enjoy what promises to be a fascinating program and give a warm virtual welcome to Nicole Keller.
Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us here for this program called The Arc of the Keyboard. We're going to explore a lot of keyboard music from our earliest sources that we know for the keyboard to about where we just ended, which is about the beginning of the 18th century. Keyboard music, of course, spans a little over 500 years, and we only have an hour, so our arc has to be just a little bit on the smaller side. So now we're going to jump back to the beginning to a work called Mit ganzem Willen by Konrad Paumann. This piece is found from the Lockheimer Lieder book, which is a collection of pieces uh, from the 15th century that includes uh, what they called intabulations, what we would call arrangements of vocal music or arrangements of instrumental music for keyboard. In this particular piece, which is a folk song, the melody is actually found in the tenor instead of perhaps where we would think it is in the soprano with some what would have been improvisations on top of it. And the sounds that I'm going to use for the keyboard, you are lucky that you get to, to sort of see the keyboard while we are playing here, so you'll be able to see where I switch manuals and where we switch stops. I'm going to start with a fairly simple sound at the beginning and then move to another sound which perhaps mimics the sound of a, of a consort or a group of instruments that may have played this particular piece. The next group of pieces are four different pieces. Two of them are dance movements, the two outside pieces, and two are vocal intabulations. And these are pieces from the 15th and the 16th century. And this was the time of a great flourishing of, of organ music, actually. The first movement, uh, the first piece is a Branley, a lively dance from the mid 16th. The second piece is called Die Süß Nachtigall, The Sweet Nightingale, 
and it's from the Buxheimer Ogelbuch, which was compiled from between 1450 to 1470. And it's a collection of more than 250 compositions. They're liturgical pieces, pieces for church. They're uh, intabulations of vocal pieces and instrumental pieces, and some of them were very well known, including by Conrad Paumann, who uh, composed the piece that I just played. And there are a wide variety of pieces that aligns uh, with the development of organs um, that were beginning to have a wider variety of sound and a larger capacity for color as well. The next piece called Maria Zart von Edler Art by Arnold Schlick is a song in devotion to Mary that was widely popular at the time. The text is Maria Tender of Noble Being, A Rose Without Thorns. And it's his best known composition. It's from his collection, Tablaturen Eitler Lobgesang, and it's a collection of hymns and songs, um, and it's really the first published organ music in 1512, it's pretty early, um, and it's in the German tradition of making uh, organ music uh, with what they called fundamentum or foundations, which is now what we would call improvisation, so in many ways it was an, a method on improvisation. And in this piece, we begin to hear for the first time imitation of different voices. That seems like a very normal and run-of-the-mill thing for us now. But at that time, in the 1500s, it was a very, very new uh, development in composition. And then we will end with a courant by Samuel Scheidt from his collection called Tabla Tura Nova, which was published in 1624. And this is actually one of the most important collections of keyboard music published before the 18th century. It's a collection of a whopping 255 pieces. Um, and it Um, it was now an open score format, it was a departure from tablature, and it was actually a departure from writing keyboard music based on how they wrote vocal music. Keyboard music was now starting to come into their own. So these four pieces, the dance of Branley, two vocal pieces, and then ending with another dance by Scheidt.
So the next piece is also by Samuel Scheidt, and it is his Bergamasca. A Bergamasca is a folk dance from the Italian city of Bergamo, and generally the character of it is associated with clown-like behavior, buffoonery. Um, I don't think it was considered as perhaps courtly as a courant was. And it's a repetition of a certain harmonic pattern, and you'll hear it very clearly throughout the piece. It's very rusty, rustic, and it has a very sturdy feel to it. Um, it's 22 short variations. 22 seems like a lot, but the, the variations are, are very short. And it's very colorful. I think I use just about every stop on the organ except for the pedal. So they're neat pieces to show off uh, the colors of the organ.
And now we move to the music of Jan Svelink. Jan Svelink was hugely, a hugely famous composer, organist, and teacher. He was the organist at the Old Church in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And of course, in the Netherlands at that time, uh, they were worshiping using the Reformed tradition, so there was no instrumental music during their worship services. But he played before and after, and he was also the civic organist for the town, so he played every day for the citizens of Amsterdam. Um, he was very well known as a teacher, of course, so his works spread throughout northern Germany and throughout Europe, and he was actually the teacher of Scheidt, who wrote the previous uh, piece. We're going to hear three pieces by Svelink. The first is a set of variations called Silly Simon. The next is the 23rd Psalm, an arrangement of that. Actually, that was arranged for lute that I'm going to play on the keyboard, so another intabulation of sorts. And then a set of variations based on the folk tune, Mein junges Leben hat ein End, which translates to My Young Life Has an End, and tells the story of a man who has lost uh, his family and is looking, looking uh, to the future for himself.
So now we've come back to Books to Huda. We've come full circle. We've seen some of the beginning pieces uh, that we have for Oregon and how they've developed into where we will now be with Books to Huda and this Preludium in E minor. Like the beginning piece at the, at the start of the program, this piece uh, is more of an improvisation, a written out improvisation that alternates between sections that are more improvisatory and sections that are more strict or fugue-like, as we like to think of them. And in this piece in particular, it has a very grand opening, very virtuosic opening, that's then followed by one fugue and then followed by another fugue that's uh, perhaps uh, a little bit more chromatic in style. So I think we see Books to Huda in his full flower and the early 18th century organ music also in its full flower.
Thank you, Nicole, for this really riveting, colorful, fascinating tour through some of the uh, earlier periods of keyboard music and organ music. And in the process, you got to hear many of the different uh, tone colors of Trinity's Flentrop organ and uh, hear some of the things that this organ does best and uh, most readily. It's a, it's a really uh, wonderfully colorful instrument and conveys this kind of music with uh, a great degree of, of liveliness and uh, convincingness, I think. So hope you've enjoyed that as much as I just did. Uh, once again, we would be most grateful if you would like to participate Uh, supporting the brown bags with the link that you find on the screen now or by sending a check to Music and Art at Trinity Cathedral and putting it in the mail to 2230 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44115 and just put brown bag concerts in the memo line of your check. Once again, we're more than grateful for anything that you might be able to send us uh, in that regard. Two weeks from different uh, musical format, two violinists and a pianist. And the uh, title is Dueling Divas. So we'll have two of our favorite violinists, Andrew Swords and Mari Saito, accompanied by the redoubtable Elizabeth DeMio on the piano. And they're gonna play uh, violin duo masterworks and fireworks. So it's gonna be who can outdo the other in kind of a uh, friendly competition between the two violinists. So that promises to be a really uh, fun program and we hope you'll plan to join us. That is at noon on the 18th of November, two weeks from right now, right back here at Trinity Cathedral. Stay safe, stay well in the meantime, and we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for joining us today.